Hello, welcome to Transition to Life. Today we're going to learn how to make one pan cake. Before we get started, I made sure that I washed my hands with soap and water and that my surface is clean. You don't want to cook in the kitchen without clean hands and a clean surface so that you don't contaminate your food. But let's get started. This is a versatile cake. By changing just one or two ingredients, we can make a chocolate cake, a lemon cake, a spice cake, or a carrot cake. We're going to make chocolate cake. It also uses just one pan, so you don't have to dirty a bowl. You don't have extra things to wash. Let's look at our ingredients. Our ingredients are flour, sugar, cocoa, baking soda, salt, vanilla, oil, vinegar, and water. Our first ingredient is flour. You see that I have a stack of measuring cups. I like the kind that are hooked on with a little ring. This ring comes off before you start to bake or cook, but keep it so that after you've washed these and you put them away, they all stay together and they don't get lost. We're going to start with a one cup measure and I'm going to use my little quarter cup measure to scoop flour into my one cup measuring cup. This recipe needs two cups. See how I've got it over the top? I'm going to take a knife and just scrape it across to make sure that I have one even level cup. I'm going to do that again with my second cup. Fill it in so that my flour stays nice and fluffy and then run my knife over the top. Two cups of flour. Our next ingredient is sugar. This recipe calls for one and a half cups of sugar. Here's a one cup measure. Here's a half a cup measure. You can put one and one in to make one and a half cups of sugar. We're doing the same thing that we did with the flour and scraping off the excess back into the container. Here's a half a cup. Here's a cup, but you can see I'm not quite at the top yet. So I'm going to take some more using my half cup measure and make sure I get all the way to the top. You can jiggle it a little bit like I did, or you can scrape it across so you have exactly one cup. Our next ingredient is cocoa. Now, don't be fooled. This is not hot chocolate. Cocoa is unsweetened and it's very bitter. It smells fabulous, but if you stick your finger in there and lick it, you're going to be sorry because it is very bitter. We're going to put three tablespoons of cocoa into our recipe. Now look carefully. This is a tablespoon. This is a teaspoon. The symbol for this is a T or TBSP. The symbol for this is a lowercase t or TSP. Capital T or big T for the big spoon. Little t or lowercase t for the small spoon. Don't get them mixed up because these ratios are what makes your cake taste good or taste awful. Starting with the tablespoon, we're going to do the same thing we did with our flour and our sugar. Get a heaping tablespoon, flatten it out. One, two, going to use baking soda. Both baking soda and baking powder are used in baking. Be sure that you don't just look at the first part, but pay attention to the second word to make sure you get the right ingredient. Both of them are used to make cakes and cookies rise up and get fluffy or puffy, but they have different tastes and they do different things. So get the right one in the right recipe. Baking soda usually has an automatic scraper inside of it. I'm going to put one teaspoon 
of baking soda in my recipe. And you never put more than this. It's always a very small amount. And that's it. My final dry recipe is salt. Watch though. I'm pouring my salt over the sink. Salt's tricky. You don't want any extra salt in your cake mix. Too salty food is, is just terrible and will ruin the whole cake. So measure it over a plate, over your sink, and then pour it in. Now that all of our ingredients are together, we're going to mix them all until you can't tell the difference. I don't want to see sugar in one section and flour in another. I want everything so mixed up that you can't tell where one thing starts and the next thing ends. So keep mixing, get the corners, get every part of it until it's all mixed up and there's no white spots or black spots or anything more grainy than other places. When you've got it all mixed together, the next thing you're going to do is dig three holes into your flour and dry mixture. You're going to put in a small hole, a medium sized hole, and a pretty big hole. They can be anywhere. Just go ahead and mix them together and make your holes. Now it's time for our wet ingredients. We have a small hole, a medium hole, and a big hole. In our smallest hole, we are going to put one teaspoon of vanilla. It's the smallest amount of liquid. One teaspoon right into the small hole. In our medium hole, we're going to put one tablespoon, see how it's bigger, of vinegar. I'm pouring this over my batter, but if you're insecure about your pouring, pour it over a cup and then put it in over the top. So in my medium hole, I'm putting one tablespoon of distilled vinegar. Finally, in my largest hole, I'm putting five tablespoons of oil. Again, if you're not comfortable pouring over the top, pour it over a, a coffee cup and then pour the entire contents into your cake mix. Three, four, and five. The last thing you're going to do is put one cup of water over the top of everything. My water is right next to me, so I'm using a plastic cup, but you may want to use a glass measuring cup that gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that you can come in and pour your water without spilling. Once you have your water over the top, then start carefully stirring all the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients together. Be careful. Scrape all the edges so that no dry ingredients are hiding anywhere at the bottom of your cake mix. This is for two reasons. You need to have everything mixed together so that the, um, that the leavening can take place and your cake can rise. And you don't want crunchy dry bits in your cake when you go to eat it. So keep stirring until it's all thoroughly mixed together. Now that all of our ingredients are mixed together, I'm going to take and put my pan in my preheated oven. Remember, it was 350 and I'm going to cook it for 40 minutes. Remember, it's going to be hot when you take it out of the oven. If you're a beginner, two mitts, two hands. Once your cake is out of the oven, you want to test it to make sure that it's done. One of the ways to do that is to take a wooden toothpick and insert it in the center of your cake. Pull it out and if no crumbs stick to it, your cake is done. You might jiggle it, you might look at it, but this is your best way to check it.